I'll be your host today. We'll be talking about tanking, predominantly Blood Death Knight, but a dash of everything else, as well as some rogue stuff, mostly combat and subtlety. Can't really talk too much about assassination because it just doesn't exist yet. Really? We can't test it yet. It'll be the last mech that comes up on the uh, alpha beta, I'm sure. But joining me today, returning from the salt mines, now in the salt fountain, there's Troxism. Hello, sir. Hi. <laughs> oh, don't sound so excited! Leech is coming! It's a new expansion! You're hyped for this! Are you? Not in its current state. Oh no! Why not? What? G give me a one sentence on why you're not excited. Gameplay is being simplified too much across all specs. Oh, well, I mean... Hmm... Yeah, we'll get into that a little more later. I'm sure. I mean, you said one sentence. I, I did say one sentence. You'll have many more sentences to come. Like, like a whole novel, I'm sure. And then joining us, a new guest today. There's Relix for Rogues. Hello, sir. Hi there. And I, I hope just, I'm, I'm on camera. Yes. Yes, you oh, are. Whatever. Because you are a camera, and I do want to confirm this live. Uh, you're not actually Dyrus. I'm not Dyrus. I've never been Dyrus, and I never will be Dyrus. <laughs> but you woke up one day, you were like, wow, it looked like Dyrus, right? So, Actually, no. Some people came to my chat room and like asked me if I was Dyrus, and I was like, who? who? So I looked him up, and I thought, <laughs> like, hmm, there's some resemblance. You didn't know who he was? I, I can see that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not into these that much. Oh, okay. That's fair. I'll allow it. That sounds good to me. Well, all right, gentlemen, we have a lot to talk about today, and I want to get into some... I do these like general questions as we bring up the show, just to let people get a little more time to get in their seats and so they don't miss anything. Um, so I already asked <laughs> Trox his one sentence on how the Legion Alpha Beta is going so far. But Relix, what do you think so far? How has it been testing wise for you? What are the overall opinions on the changes coming so far to uh, the next expansion? What do you think? I think um, they're, they are still pretty early in development. Um, they are backpedaling on a lot of sub changes right now. Uh, Outlaw kind of looks fineish, I guess. It's definitely more playable than um, than Outlaw, yeah, than than Subity. That's fair. And do we know much about assassination yet? Like, have you? We know the tooltips somewhat. Yeah. Like, uh, it will probably be a cleave spec, um, having a lot of bleed damage. Uh, Garrod will be in the in the rotation, and so will Rupture. So we have two active bleeds, and some um, bleed spreading talents, I guess. Like I think it's called Blood Sweat. Uh, it looks kind of promising. We'll see, but I think it will actually not be a simplification of current assassination. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of bleeds and poisons for assassination, and then Outlaw is you're a pirate. And subtlety is you're like this ninja. Those are the three fantasies, I suppose, that are going on right now. Yeah, I just hope that fantasy will not trump gameplay. That would be really bad. That's the new buzzword right now. So I'll toss it back over to Trox. What are your... Want to elaborate a little more on your, your thoughts so far, Legion Alpha Beta as a whole? What do you think? I mean... My experience playing Legion Alpha is basically I just kind of don't want to play it because every time I play Blood on it, it's... The spec is so simplified and so slowed down that it's really hard to actually be engaged in playing it. Mm. Just doing even normal activities, for example, if you tried to quest with it or you tried to do a five-man. Then doing raid testing, I mean, it highlights the gaps in the toolkit of the spec. And these gaps were basically created by taking, taking wad blood and being like, hmm, this worked really well. 
Let's go back to Cataclysm Blood, which didn't work at all. And let's go from there. It is, because I, I didn't play Blood back in the day. Is that, what's the major thing that looks like it's going back to the Cataclysm style? The GCD is being increased to one and a half seconds instead of one. This was the old Cataclysm GCD. Admittedly, it does scale down with haste, but you're right. not going to get the 50% haste. So it's still going to be about 1.3 seconds. This, the reason the GCD was such a big deal was it, a tank that works based on reactivity cannot, and has its reactive abilities on the GCD, cannot have a long GCD. It just doesn't work. It makes you unable to react in time. With a 1.3 second GCD, if you lag up a bit, the boss will get a swing in during your GCD, like two swings potentially, if you lag up a little. The other problem is just, the other thing that's going back to the Cata model is Death Strike is being changed back to the old Death Strike model, where now you are once again, your Death Strike size is once again reduced by, say, having a defensive cooldown. If you have a pain suppression mm, mm, or something, your Death Strike is going to be smaller. <laughs> or if you have a shield, like your own blood shield, a disc's power word shield, that reduces the size of your next Death Strike too. We're back to the same model of. If you actually reduce or absorb damage in any way, you're penalized for it. And Wad got away from that by moving yeah. to Resolve and an AP-based Death Strike. But now they're like, now let's go back to a model that failed to work in Firelands, especially. It's, it's really that... I don't know that's how it's going to work with defensives and absorbs, though. I mean, you're not going to have absorbs all the time outside of yours because... They're... Yes, but it cuts into the effect... Like, okay, here's the problem. Oh. What ends up happening is, let's say you have a bunch of absorbs or damage reductions, and yeah, you're right, they reduce the damage, but then what happens when they drop off? For the last while, you've still been punished for having them on you, but now in the next few hits, you have no protection, but you still have a weaker death strike. So you create, it creates this artificial window of vulnerability due to bad mechanics. That's I mean, I'm trying to summarize quickly. No, no sure, you're, you're, you're fine. Because the new Death Strike, or the new plus old Death Strike, works just like Frenzied Regen does on Guardian Druid, where it snapshots the damage you have taken in the last six seconds, and you heal for that amount, or a percentage of that amount. Yeah, so, but yeah. Frenzied Regen lasts a lot longer, so you can, like, I'll talk about this later, but you can snapshot it really high, whereas Death Strike is instant, which means snapshotting hurts it. That's because true. Okay. you, it, like, when you death strike, you need to death strike now. You need the effect now. Sure. Frenzied Regent doesn't isn't used the same way. It's fundamentally different. It's true. Yeah, it's a hot. It's a, like a six second hot. Yeah. That's the fair enough. The same. Like Frenzied Regent is helped by the fact that it snapshots. Death strike is hurt by this fact. Mm. We'll have to see. Realize what you think of Star Wars: The uh, Force Awakens. Did you see it, or are you in the uh, Azertharian boat? I've actually not seen it yet. Oh my god, what is with this? Are you like, ah, that's that's fair. Did you did you see it, Trox? Did you see the Force Awakens? Ouch. No, I didn't see it. Wow, I am. That's fair. What what I would relics? Like to see it say? maybe, but um, it's kind of hard to find a original version in Germany, also two D. So I need um, yeah. Uh, Most of them are dubbed and three oh, D. Oh, yeah. they're all really they're all dubbed. Yes, they are. Germany's dubbing a lot of movies. Hmm. Actually, it's it's really hard to watch uh, a movie in general on, on in English. Interesting. I guess that's just a that is definitely a, a just a country barrier. I suppose I didn't know they would. Why wouldn't they show it still in English over there? Huh. It's pretty ra rare that's, to find one. That's very strange. Yeah. Well, I just have to wait for the Blu-ray to come out on, like, can you order your own Blu-ray copy in, in English, I suppose? Sure, I, I can do that. Huh. It's um, multilingual, usually. That's strange. Interesting. And what were you going to say about The Force Awakens, Trox? What are you... Uh, have you I mean, I you... told you I haven't seen it. That's for what to say about it. I mean... You've seen other Star Wars how many though, right? I find it amusing how many spoilers there are flowing around for it. Well, it's the movie's been out for like two months now. You, I, I've already done like no, a I mean four hour stream week. about it. Hmm? Oh no, uh, I mean like the first week. Obviously oh yeah, two months later. Oh yeah, some guy like got was spoiling as he walked out of the theater to a huge crowd and then got like the crap beat out of him. 
<laughs> right there in the movie theater, which he deserves it, obviously. Um, obviously, violence is always a solution. Right. Well, how about this? One? Here's the real question that chat wants to know, Trox, about you personally as a human being. Do you like hamburgers more or hot dogs more? Uh, I guess if I had to pick, probably hot dogs. With a whole bunch of toppings or just like ketchup and mustard? <laughs> ketchup and mustard. Yeah, nothing crazy. No relish, no onions, no mushrooms, no whole bunch of stuff. Can't have hot dog without onions. <laughs> well, what's what's your answer, well, the, really? Uh, the thing you would have... Oh. The thing of putting a bunch of toppings on it at that point, you're not really eating a hot dog. You're just eating a bunch of toppings. <laughs> you're not with wrong. Yeah, with a hot dog. Really, what's your what's your opinion? Are you a hot dog fan? Then you gotta go for the hot dogs. I'm more of a burger person. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I got fat, so I'm I'm eating healthy now. Last like twenty kilogram. I think that's like forty pounds Ooh. in the last four months. Yeah. Damn. I look different. I look different now. Yes. You look like you look like Dyrus. I look like Dyrus, yes. I look a little <laughs> more like Dyrus back then, I guess. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I don't even know what I'm into. I haven't. I, I had a. I had a burger the other day, and it was. It was all right. Then I had hot dogs, and I was like, all right, this is all right. But I don't know. I don't know which one I'm into more than that. I only ask because today there's like the Super Bowl or something. It's like a big deal for Americans. Sports, sports ball. You guys gonna watch the sports ball at all or? I think, I mean, Trox would be the most likely. I don't think Relix, he Relix didn't even know it was happening. He was like, what's happening today? Something, something to you? Yeah. I don't enjoy watching football that much. The only sport I watch is uh, Counter-Strike usually. Oh, that's, that's fair. I like how you didn't say eSports, though. You just said sport. I like that. Soon it will yeah, be I did, I did on the on same purpose. level. Yeah. Soon, soon. To me personally, it is. Uh, you got like you, you you got people in the world like not accepting esports as a sport, but then you also have um, people who watch esports not accepting regular sports. I think everybody should accept both kinds of sports. No, I I agree. It'll take a while, but it's gonna go. It'll work eventually. But yeah, the thing is, um, big corporations are realizing that there's money to be gained, so it will Just become more mainstream. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> we'll see. So, but yeah. companies are dropping a lot of monies into the prize pool. Just look at Dota 2. I think the international had like 17 or 18 million total in uh, prize money. Yeah, it was rough. I didn't. I mean, it made technically more than League or had more prize money. But the international is like one thing, whereas League has multiple seasons and worlds and regionals and all star all those stuff too. So, yeah, I guess you might as well add those up and add them to the prize pool in total. Yeah. So, yeah, I think gaming is really becoming a giant industry. Absolutely. Well, let's dive right back into that gaming gooey center and go back into Legion now. We'll play some spec right. ping pong. So I'll go to Trox first. So you are talking about Death Strike for a little while there. But I think one of the biggest new changes is that, which I thought was a little more of engaging gameplay, was how they've changed... Marorand in Bone Shield to actually be like an ability you use to gain the stacks of it. You know, it's like putting it up on cooldown. You're like, hey, look, it's Bone Shield. So is this a better answer for the whole active mitigation for for the Blood Death Knight? Wow. And then Blood Strike is back and Heart Strike is back. And I mean, what are, you, what are your thoughts right now overall the Marorand changes to the Blood Death Knight? Is not active mitigation. Sure. Just as at a basic level, it's not flagged as such. On a secondary level... Now, I'm going to preface, preface this by saying that currently on Alpha, in the current build, you do not cast Marorand ever. It's a trap, basically. Mm. It's not worth using. But the way it seems to be intended to work is that you're supposed to maintain Bone Shield. Now, this isn't even possible because of how slow the rotation is right now. And like I said, it's not actually worth your time resources to do it even if you could okay but the intent is is i'm pretty sure is that it's supposed to be more of an upkeep buff rather than quote active mitigation in any way shape or form right i mean so and the thing is it doesn't feel 
the way it feels like right now is it's a really bad version of Rune Tap. It doesn't give enough damage reduction to actually be a tool against Burst. It's on the GCD, it has a very short duration, and it just doesn't it doesn't play very well. I mean, like I said, right now on Legion Alpha, you don't cast it. You only cast Heart Strike and Death Strike, that's it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like even if they did make Mararand worth using, one of two things would happen. Either it would still, like if they tried to buff Mararand, either it would still not be worth using, or it would phase out Heart Strike and you'd have the opposite problem. We'd mostly just be spamming Mararand and Death Strike and not using Heart Strike. Mm. Okay. I mean, I, I go into this in my big document I wrote on Blood, which was like 42 pages. I explained the problem in depth there, but that's really the best way to put it. Yeah. The, because all your runes are now death runes, there's no distinction between runes, which means every ability has to compete directly with each other, which means one is always better than the other. There's always a better ability, or if they're both equal, then it doesn't matter which button you press, so why even have it? Everything just is a the, the Death Knights now since all of your runes are been uniformed is everything just has a cooldown but then also has a smaller cooldown associated with it too because you have to wait either sometimes for cooldowns of runes it's or just more the like everything to too. shares a cooldown right. so you only yeah. use the best ability which means you pretty much only use one or two abilities because nothing else is worth using right right right, right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I thought that was kind of a weird change. I thought the simplification of like the rune, like the rune regeneration system, was like a good thing for all three to have their own little like way to do rune regeneration. But all the runes for each three Death Knight spec to all be unholy frost or death runes now is kind of, I don't, I don't know. I thought that was kind of weird. It's not a system that really works that well. I'll be honest in practice. Yeah. And then, yeah, still have your mastery for Blood Shield, which we talked about a little bit earlier. That I mean, go, go ahead. To go into something else, I compared Blood to Cataclysm, and to some extent, Mop Blood had similar issues. On Mop, they finally realized the GCD needed to be one second, and mm -hmm. it was a lot better. But back then, it was the same as now. You didn't have Room Tap, so you didn't have any real way to preemptively deal with burst so how did you deal preemptively with burst and catamop you used pre-shielding with death strike now why is that not gonna work in legion well because going from mop to wad when they did their big tank squish they nerfed blood shield by about 3.25 times it was a huge nerf to it now in wad no one really complained about this because Room tap was added, so you were no longer trying to use Death Strike as both a proactive and a reactive tool. So you right. weren't trying to basically shove a square peg into a round hole anymore. So it didn't matter that Blood Shield was nerfed so much. But now, in Legion, we're back to that Kata model, except now with the additional handicap of not being able to pre-shield efficiently because it's so weak. Basically, the ratio of healing to shield now isn't greatly in favor of healing in Wad and Legion. Before, it was greatly in favor of shield. So if you pre-shield now, you're wasting most of the effect of your active mitigation, so it's exceptionally inefficient to do so. And again, in Wad, Room Tap fixed the problem. In Legion, Bone Shield tries to fix it, but it's a really, really, really bad version of Room Tap right now. It, so it doesn't fix it. Going going off of what I'm looking at, what Ladia said in chat too, and this is not trying to like, uh, you know, as the as the kids say nowadays, throw shade. But obviously, we can only test with so much gear currently, and all of our artifact stuff isn't unlocked yet. But I've been a weird proponent for the whole like GCD argument, because outside mm -hmm. of possibly I would say rogues and like feral druids, like kitty cats, I don't know why there's this huge fixation. Uh, and this is from Blizzard first that they gave us in the first place. That everyone has to have like a super fast GCD, or that everyone has to have a 1.5 to one second GCD. Like, why does it have to be so much faster? Because in a tanking perspective, from your perspective, I think is if bosses just didn't swing as often, wouldn't that just it would matter that well, right? you could still have a slower GCD? Okay. Yes, but here's the thing. Okay. Let's say you do that. Let's say you basically... What you're effectively doing in that situation is you're slowing the game down by about 30%. And if you slow the game down by about 30%, WoW is a game about making decisions. 
And if you have 30% more time between every decision, then it's basically easier to make the correct decision. It directly makes the game simpler. It's not the same thing as before. Mm -hmm. It's the it's similar to what it was before, but now it's basically 30% easier by default. Uh yeah, I guess it's a different perspective to look at it too, because I've sort of always been in the camp, at least at least for the last expansion entirely, that raiding should be made a little easier because so many people don't even get to raid ever. I'm not saying mythic should be like raiding up to that point. I mean, kind of do that when they re-nerfed normals and removed abilities and stuff like that. So I wonder if that's what they're trying to do is let it be a little easier to play and or understand a class. Whereas if you're still at a high level of understanding, all the artifact perks, all the relic unlocks, all the gearing I decisions mean, you can make will make the class still harder for you. Because here's you'll the understand thing. More. I'll talk about this more later. Right. When I talk about talents, but yes. basically that sounds great in theory and that's a great idea, but that's not what they're doing. What mm. they've done is actually take out complexity in every way, shape and form in the form of no more resource management or va massively dumbed down resource management. Yeah. No complex mechanics like Plague Leech or Brev. And yeah, Plague Leech wasn't that complex, but it was more complex than what you're doing now. And I mean, it's... All they've done is take stuff away. They haven't added new complex mechanics. They haven't added optional mechanics. There is no big complexity hidden away behind all the stuff you mentioned. Yeah. That's the problem. They've just taken, they've just made it easier and taken away the hard stuff that used to be optional before. But anyways, yeah. we'll have we'll to talk see. about more later. Sure, absolutely. Well, I'll kick it over to Rogues now. Yes. Relics. Um, again, you can touch on assassination a little bit. Obviously, mostly outlaw and subtlety as they have changed the most. So how are the spec fantasies for outlaw and sub looking? Like subtlety is this like shadowy ninja and outlaw is a pirate. And then assassination is like an assassin from Assassin's Creed, I suppose. But mm -hmm. um, like, what do you think so far of the like the fantasy aspect they're going for? Are they going in the right direction? Are the three specs really looking very different from each other? What do you think? Um, it's definitely a step into a direction, at least for a combat to a pirate. But I don't know. Like, wh what is combat anyway? Combat is really, I don't know what everybody does, right? So just renaming that back to something else um, pretty much already did the trick. They didn't really add too much stuff, to be honest. Like. Sinister Strike got renamed to Saber Slash or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, Revealing Strike, well, that's gone, but now you have Dispatch, as in Pistol Shot. Uh, kind of, kind of the same mechanic, except that it's not the um, uh, the default execute builder at 35%. But Combat lost a lot of stuff from going uh, from being Combat to going out uh, to becoming Outlaw. There's still Blade Flurry. Uh, which is also a concern for the other two specs because Blade Flurry is pretty much a use this ability do automatic cleave ability. Yep. Yep. Um, it's kind of hard to balance against that. It's also uh, the damage is also front up. So yeah, there's no downsides to Blade Flurry. Like nope. I don't know. Use use the ability do AOE. That's pretty much it. Uh, Restless Blades is gone, or ruth Ruthlessness, depending on what you wanted to call it. Uh, that was the mechanic that made your cooldowns regenerate faster. Mm -hmm. So Combat um, Outlaw is basically stuck with 3-minute cities, which are the, the, uh, the bane of the rogue existence, in my opinion. No rogue spec has 3-minute uh, cooldowns, and the last time we had it, uh, which was during Mists of Pandaria, uh, namely Shadow Blades, it didn't feel so bad because we still had our other cooldowns on top of it. And for combat, it was basically Adrenaline Rush plus um, Shadow Blades anyway. Right. So, yeah. Hmm. I mean, you have... you have. I mean, I'm looking at cooldowns right now. I mean, Killing Spree is a two-minute, and Cannonball Killing Barrage Spree still a thing, yes. is a 60-second. But yeah, your main cooldown, Adrenaline Rush, is a three-minute cooldown. Yeah. Killing Spree does not that lot... And doesn't do that much damage. Um... It's basically a filler ability when you're on low energy, and that's it. You attack seven times with your weapons, blah, 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 and that's it. It's it's not, I don't know, 
there's not a lot going on. Hmm. It's also not, I don't know. The, the cooldown is a lot longer compared to live. On live, it's roughly 40 seconds. Um, and on alpha, it's not. <laughs> it's it's way longer. And I don't know. I think I think it will be pretty bad for the spec to, to lose that sort of um, uh, cooldown reduction. Okay. Because it, it, it already feels pretty slow outside of cooldowns and you prolong the, the time you wait on your cooldowns basically. There is a trade, artifact trade later that reduces um, the cooldown on adrenaline rush and killing spree I think a little bit whenever you use adrenaline rush but that's not, it's not the same and it's also not by the, um, the same, um, it's less powerful basically. It's just 30 seconds blanket. And with current live combat, you can pretty much uh, use Marked for Death to your advantage on ads. So you will get a lot of cooldown reduction and blah, 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 and more cooldowns, which lead to more cooldown reduction and so on and so on. Right, right. They're taking that skill element away, basically. Hmm. Yeah, but Pistol Shot feels good. <laughs> but Pistol Shot feels good. Hey, both Subtlety and Outlaw Rogue can actually do full damage from range terrible damage but they can build combo points and use finishers from range now so that's that's the fantasy right subtlety can use uh, what well subtlety can use the know. shuriken toss to build combo points from oh range. that's not mm, that's yeah. more of an aoe around your character no no no, no. the shuriken storms the aoe shuriken toss oh. is a single target thing oh oh my yeah, god yeah yeah just like really? how pistol shot can be used from range you're going like, down that road yeah, I, hey, 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 rogues have been like, okay, I do stuff from ranged, man. But you can do it yeah, now. Why not Why not spec deadly throw as well and then in life? Like, well, the throw. Only, oh, you need right there. <laughs> only subtlety gets deadly throw uh, as a baseline in shuriken toss. Deadly throw is gone. Other than that, I think everyone doesn't have it. But, but yeah, a little bit on subtlety. What do you think about, I mean, it's going to be reworked. Do you know, have you read posts about what they're going to do to it? I know they've said that they're going to revert shadow dance back to the like, active ability of going into stealth, not like this passive right now, whenever you use a finisher, you go into stealth kind of I thing. Think, I think they didn't really um, say what exactly they want to do. They want to revert it to some sort of active, but they didn't specify mm -hmm. what exactly they were thinking of. Um, if they also want to bring back Find Weakness or not, because Find Weakness is also gone, so is uh, Sanguinary, Sanguinary Veins, and so is Sinister Calling. Mm. So subtlety lost a lot of the proactive and active uh, reactive elements. Uh, the the reactive one being uh, sinister calling, which advances your rupture uh, by having it proc basically whenever you backstep, or having a chance on multi strike for it to uh, proc faster and faster. So you got to react to that and watch your rupture, reapply rupture early. Um, and also the proactive aspect is gone, which is energy pooling basically. So whenever on, on live right now, you gotta you gotta stack your cooldowns basically, and have high energy going into your cooldowns and dump all your energy like doing doing big damage, and that that's that's missing on alpha. On alpha, it's it's pretty pretty well. There's no energy pooling basically. You just spam your finishers as fast as you can. Build to five, spam finishers, build to five. It's very methodic, uh, methodical. Right. For and subtlety, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's nothing going on, basically. The, the feedback Except loop for... is that when you actually use finishers and go into Shadow Dance, you gain energy back. That's the exactly. feedback loop for energy. So you have to spend a finisher to get the feedback loop. That's a wide loop. pool. It's a right. wide pool. Mm -hmm. And you can also spec uh, Relentless Strikes right now, which increases yep. that amount of energy. So it's a pretty stupid amount of energy you get, and that's with basically no raid gear at all. So now, now imagine having a fully geared character. Like, <laughs> you're it, not, they're not lowering the GCD it for really, you. Really, yeah, it devalues the whole purpose of haste because haste gives you energy regeneration, or like the talent vigor. They're both pointless because you get so much energy. Uh, anyway. Yeah, but shadow, shadow techniques is also not working right now. So that's very true. It's will, not. The spec will even have even more combo points to work with. Yep. And it's already it's pretty much sated, so I don't know. They they gotta basically redo it. I don't know. I don't I don't see how they can. I felt like some uh, of the the talent choices were neat. I still think Death from Above is just dead weight for like every spec. 
Um, it's just a balancing problem. Mm. Just increase the damage on that and it will be taken. Yeah, maybe. We'll have to see. Even though Roll the Bones for Outlaw is super cool looking. <laughs> I think so as well. I'm, I'm not sure. We'll have to see how it plays. I played it a little sure. bit around with it on uh, in the raid. Um, once you get proper rig auras, I think it will be easier to work with because I, I tried to like look at the buff, um, mouse over it, and and it just said uh, you're having a random uh, random combat enhancement right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it didn't exactly tell me which one, and they don't one of them to, increases to to the your database. yeah. Yeah, one, but one of them increases your um, combo point uh, re uh, generation. So each of your builders will do an additional, will will give you an additional combo point. Yep. And yeah, it's kind of weird, like having that happen when you're like not expecting it. Also, they, I don't know, they subtlety is, is gaining a lot of random combo points. It seems so. Anticipation might become mandatory again. Yep. I don't. I don't really understand why it's not baseline. To be honest, like anticipation is not that powerful. I mean, sure, it's also a huge quality of life improvement. Many combat rogues use it currently, even though marked for death is marked for death is stronger, just for quality of life purposes, I guess. Is anticipation used to be? Was it the whole honor among thieves thing as well, where you can hold like a buff of up to five extra combo points before they increase the hill UI added combo point bar? Was that the whole like cool hook of Subtlety, right? Is you can like pool and you have the comma point like uh, buffer, but that's gone. So you have to yeah. take a locked in talent to do this. In general, yes. Um, Marked for mm -hmm. Death might be actually stronger in, in Sims, I guess, but it's 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 not easy to use. It's um, So basically, on live, if you were to use it, you were to sit at four combo points, wait for the last combo point to fill in automatically, so it will not be wasted. Right. And that sort of gameplay, you, you cannot always do it to do that. You might energy cap, you might combo point cap, uh, you might need the damage right now because you want to burst or whatever. It's uh, also more complicated once you start factoring um, builders into that, which will add, uh, which which um, give you more than one combo point. For example, ambush. Or uh, when you when you when you use shadow blades on alpha, mm -hmm. which is pretty weird to be honest. It's the baseline duration is five seconds. Like what? You, you get a three minute cooldown with a five second duration. Well, it lasts it lasts for twelve seconds in the newest build, but the oh, tooltip changed. is wrong. Yes, it does last for twelve anyway. seconds. It felt a lot better, but mm. with shadow the technique not is, working, you don't know how it feels. The problem is. Uh, a lot of it, a lot of the power comes from the artifacts, yep. uh, because there's some trait in there that increases the uh, shadow blades duration by so and so seconds and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I think specs kind of feel like incomplete without having those artifact traits. It's kind of like a DLC on a game. Like <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's a that's or, a valid yeah. Because I mean, we're not going to get character copies. I hope they give us character copies in a couple of months from now that are level 110 in like starting dungeon epics or blues and then a full artifact power unlock like just fill our bags with the most that gives us the most artifact power there's a spam click and power up artifact fully so we can have all the hooks unlocked maybe give us all the relics as well because we need to test this because the classes do feel very incomplete because they've sort of as trox said they've kind of removed things and stripped away and the, the pruning in legion is a lot heavier than it was in warlords and some major glyphs have become talents, and some whole new talents are involved. So without, and all, of, all the Warlord's perks are gone too. So without a fully yeah. empowered artifact, it's hard to see how it's going to feel, how the ebb and flow will feel, because you just don't know. You can't, you can't test it. Now the problem is also, combat will most likely, Outlaw will most likely be the AoE spec. Okay. At least from what it looks like right now. And subtlety and assassination, single target or cleave specs. And now you get a respec on progression for each fight. But which artifact level are you? And which artifact weapon are you going to level? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you're most likely going to level the single target one. But still, it's, it's it feels bad when you're trying to cleave and you're missing key talents or artifact traits. Not, not talents, but artifact traits. Because... I don't know. Well, for whatever reason, Blizzard decided to. I don't know. We'll we'll see how it works out. Maybe that they're gonna change it. 
still alpha for no. yeah for pure dps classes for hunters warlocks rogue uh mage it's going to be interesting because normally the specs have been sort of all balanced around like well one is good for single target one is good for aoe one is good for movement right uh sort of just to be basic but since they kind of want every single spec all 36 of them minus of course tanks in this in this argument and healers to all have the ability through talents and i guess in a way now relics to change your perspective or how you play the character based on an, an encounter but you can still stay outlaw you can still stay subtlety right and do everything you need to do but i don't think it's going to be the case because pure dps have always gone like well i need to aoe today i'm going to go combat i need a single target today i'm going to go sub but i'm going to trash now i'm going to go combat yeah right but it, you you have to it's a lot of leveling and obviously the grind in legion the whole initial grind is supposed to take a while it's gonna take between what four and six weeks or three to five weeks for a hardcore player to level up one artifact completely and then of course that'll profess each of the other artifacts as well but if you have to take that long to do one artifact and you're a pure dps and you want to have two are you just gonna be severely gimped for the or first three. tier of rating or three because you need to have it definitely powered up before Gul'dan comes available in Suramar. So it's going to be weird for because for me it won't matter. I'm just going to level up Doomhammer and be good with it. But you have to worry about two swords and four four daggers. So how yeah, because there's not a lot of catch up between your own specs. Maybe we've data mined some new stuff, but we'll have to see because that's that's going to be a, a awkward contentious point for the first couple of months of the expansion. After the first tier, it won't matter anymore. Everyone has a full artifact. Everyone powered up. Whatever. Tier 20 won't matter. But tier 19 will be a little weird. So, I'm going to go back over here to get hit in the face. Trox. What? What? <laughs> you've, you've dabbled in other tanks. And obviously, Protection Warrior, I mean, Protection Paladin and Brewmaster Monk are not available right now. But what have you seen that is, like working properly or is good gameplay in your opinion that you've seen so far between I the mean, other tanks that you've, that you've tested so far it's weird I, I talked about guardian a bit before now i'm gonna say this currently on alpha guardian's really 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 overtuned hmm. okay. but part of the reason guardian is powerful right now on alpha is because they can snapshot frenzied regen basically take damage on purpose get a big frenzied regen and because they have an ability, the ability to extend it, they can roll it for a while and basically reap the benefit. This actually is kind of interesting gameplay. However, I feel like Blizzard is going to nerf it by, for example, making it re-update every tick or something like that, because I don't think Blizzard wants that type of gameplay. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I think that's good, but I think it'll get changed. So I don't really know what to say about it. The other problem is it kind of makes Guardian a bit one-dimensional. You're very focused around Frenzied Region. I don't know. It's a bit awkward. As for the other tanks, I mean... Prop Warrior is exactly the same as it was before. It's just slower. That's Which fair. I personally yeah. don't very find fun. But, I mean, maybe some people do. Yeah, the, the, the Rage classes are interesting because they're both very even 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 guardian druid is very slow i mean blood dk got slowed down more than either of right. them but... no it definitely did i wonder though again if they're trying to make a, a third expansion in a row right they were trying to change the healing tanking you know holy trinity paradigm here where tanks should want to be healed and need to be healed by healers but not get globaled in two or three attacks which Tanks do want to get healed today. Look at logs, especially progression right. logs. Look at the portion of all the like. Look at the, look at a blood decay. A tank who does basically all their mitigation through self healing, so you can actually mm -hmm. see it on the meters. Right. Look at what percentage of the healing done to the DK was by himself, and what was done by healers. You will actually see that healers do about half, sometimes more, sometimes a bit less percentage of the healing D depending on if you have that he needs to survive the fight now the thing is right um 
now if you but then healers will often say stuff like oh i never heal the tanks directly so that means tanks have too much self-sustain but then when you actually look at the log you see that's not the case what's going on here look at the healing breakdown did look at the spells the tank was healed by oh let's see beacon of light power word shield life mm -hmm. bloom earth shield none of these are heal almost these are basically all fire and forget heals yeah, you have to refresh Life Bloom on the tank every once in a while. Yeah, you have to apply Beacon to him or Caster of Shield every once in a while. But generally speaking, nobody really considers that directly healing the tank. Sure. And generally, and the problem is those healing heals are so powerful, especially this tier with a with a trinket that buffs Beacon of Light, from what I remember, or a set bonus. More at the point where if you have two Holy Paladins in a raid, yeah, Beacon will just keep your tanks alive. Yep. Between double Beacon and the Beacon buff. Now, is that something that should be addressed? Maybe. I'm not a healer, so I'm not going to tell healers if they should be healing tanks directly more. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, I guess that's up to healers if they want to do that. All I would say is be careful what you ask for because... <laughs> Wrath of the you know how Wrath of the Lich King was what people what was was that tanks didn't do any couldn't stay alive at all they had no self healing or anything no sustain mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what happened was basically you just had two healers whose full time job for the entire fight was to spam the tank mm -hmm. I mean I would just be careful if I was a healer for asking for that sort of thing back. But like I said, it's not my place to tell healers how they should play. I'm sure a lot of you... And, and if healers oh. do want that sort of thing back, I would say <laughs> that you should be looking at deleting abilities like Beacon from the game. Oh, well, absolutely. As like step one, basically. Right, right, rather right. than trying to basically make tank gameplay decisions not matter. Because here's the thing. When you say, oh, you want healers to be a bigger portion of um, tank survivability, you say 50-50 right. right now is too too much in favor of the tank. Let's say we reduce tanks to only doing 30%, risk being responsible for about 30% of their own survival. And then, you know, if it, then tank DPS is keeps getting reduced so it doesn't compete with DPS players. And you end up having the role basically be squeezed between two opposing pressures. Where, and then it's like, well, what, what's there left? If you're not supposed to do damage, you're not supposed to be responsible for majority of your own survival. What are you doing as a tank? Mechanics? But DPS and healers have those too, and they're not really, and tank mechanics are not generally more complex in any way, and they aren't so far in Legion either from testing, so. Sure. What, what is a tank that's supposed to do? If they're not supposed to be responsible for even half their own survival and they're not supposed to do a lot of damage what are they supposed to do you can take the time to rate lead ah <laughs> yeah it's i mean it's... I, I don't get me wrong i know i'm not making the argument well here because again i'm trying to summarize That's but fine. i have made it in other places quite in depth no, it's a weird place to think about because they're talking about this in chat right now too to some degree that the old school of healing was that like you'd have one healer and their job was to heal the tank and heal the tank only. Whoever was tanking got one healer. And then when that healer ran out of mana or had to like regen for a while, they would swap healers have A and B healer, right? And that was like the, the Holy Paladin Dawn of Flash of Light where all they would do for every boss fight is flash of light one person or swap to the other tank and heal one person the whole time. And then they wanted to make this active indication thing where tanks were more responsible for, for obviously smoothing out or reacting to or healing off damage they take or, you know, buffering it, right? And now if, if certain tanks and three or I would argue even four of the tanks of six all have tons of self-healing or tons of self-preservation... But they want to reduce that again, but they want healers to heal tanks, right? Like the, the Wrath of the Lich King tanks being two shot by a Shambler or by Arthas doesn't happen anymore, to the, for the most part. Um, on early progression, it, it might. Like some bosses are like, you're dead. But more that's maybe a tank fault. Then how much should a tank heal for themselves? How much should they have to mitigate? And then how much should they be healed for? Like, I mean, the problem with that model of the bosses don't do a lot of damage and healers do are responsible for most of the tank's survival is that tank has nothing left to do at all. Right, exactly. 
There's no yeah. gameplay to being a tank then, or very little. I mean, if they nerf tank healing or tank absorption and tank mitigation to be like 25 to 30% of incoming and 70% has to be responsible for a healer, then it's almost like too much. Like, it's like a healer has to only pay attention to a tank. So then how do you work in like huge raid mechanics? You have to like, I mean, they did say they wanted five healers in Legion and that never worked out because to make that happen, they'd have to put like so much AOE damage and no, you know what they would have to do to make that work? Make every boss reflect a percentage of damage done. Then you can't bring 19 DPS and kill a boss in 15 seconds with no <laughs> well, that's That's fun Problem for solved. farm. Uh, what's the word record? Or give every boss right Nefarian's Crackle. Yeah, or just yeah. give every boss Nefarian's Crackle, punish you for having too much DPS and force you to bring healers. Right. Sounds like fun. Sounds like, mm, I, can't I mean, it would right. make healers be more represented. That's the solution. Or everybody, everybody gets the artifact trait that you damage yourself while doing damage. The outlaw rogue perk, yeah. Even though that that comes up later, but you can read up now. The outlaw rogue perk hits you for five percent of current health, but then they have a perk later on that heals you for five percent of maximum. That totally counters like the built-in damage dealt. So the people were freaking out like, I have to do damage to myself to to do more damage. Yo, it's gonna do nothing because you're gonna heal yourself for more than that anyway. And you got an Estus flask too that heals for a poop ton. So you're you're totally fine, rogue. Calm down. It's worthless. It's like a cool fantasy thing that you hurt yourself to do damage, but you're not gonna hurt yourself that much. It's just I don't know. It's 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 like it it's, it kind of sounds like a trade off with no upside. Like what's the upside? What do I what do I gain like other than the expected damage I do? Because like every rate uh, like every DPS cooldown, it's expected of me to use it on cooldown or most of the time on cooldown. So what do I gain by damaging myself? Sure. Well, you gain the damage buff. Yeah, Whatever but I would gain that called. anyway. Yeah. 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 It's not more powerful just because I it's take the damage. curse of the dread blades, relics. Yeah, but why why can't I pass that curse to my victim? Like I don't know, put in some class fantasy. Like I don't know. You you pass it to your victim by stabbing him in the back of the butt. Yeah, and then he's cursed, so I don't take damage. Anymore. <laughs> he's See? cursed and bleeding from the butt. Yep, that's <laughs> terrible. I mean, who wants that? <sighs> Almost it feels like trade shed in here, like. Linking anal rupture or whatever. Oh, well, that's what we do. I mean, as a melee DPS, we hit things in the butt, more or less. Unless it's a dragon. They can hit it from the side. Because don't hit dragons in the butt. That's bad. I haven't. We haven't seen tail whips in so long, testing the Thendra. I was like, is this in the tail whip location? Woo! There I go. Because <laughs> you don't remember where, like, exactly where it was in the back foot. That's funny. But Fun fact, the DK has oh. so little mobility on Alpha that if you get caught oh, by a tail is. whip... You'll get slammed into the wall and repeatedly, the, and you'll literally never be able to escape unless you get gripped. They, but hey, they gave you back uh, March of the Damned, okay? And it's different now, but you it's can actually not be. Not the mobility spell. You, you can it's be a, immune to knockbacks. Uh, you can soak tail lips and not get moved. Yeah, but raid mechanics often ignore <laughs> such immunity. <laughs> probably, yeah, probably. IBF never works on anything, for example. I yeah, doubt yeah, yeah. much of the dam will work on anything in a raid. That's true. It's a PvP thing. PvP. Outlaws, oh. grab Outlaws getting grappling hook while hey, we were talking about Grappling movies. hook is like a better version of Heroic Leap. It is so good. It's a super slow version with different upsides. You can use a scale terrain. I don't... Yeah, I like that. I I used it to skip some parts on the um, um, what's it called artifact quest. So the Blizzard intended most likely intended uh, the rogue to go the long way, but I, I just went straight through the mountains and what whatnot just with that ability. <laughs> just climbed the mountains. So much fun. Yeah, just climbed yeah. the mountains. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So when they decide that there will not be flying again, at least on launch. Uh, rogues have to have pretty good tools to counter that. Okay. Can go any place they want. Well, let's dive into some more rogue stuff here. Um, bring up sure. some talents if you want to go through things. I mean, don't go through every single one. A lot of talents are sort of the same. You move around a little bit. But um, you want to talk about outlaw rogue first from a talent perspective and and what what's like what's notably good and what is like notably not very good. If you want to walk through some stuff with me, Relix. Yeah, I'm just I'm gonna do a quick summary, I guess. Like tier fifteen, there's ghostly strike. It feels kinda like slow. It 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 makes us the spec even more slow. So I don't know. We'll see how it will be tuned. And then there's two passive ones. 
they seem like decent, I guess. A grappling hook is pretty cool, while the other two are like somewhat, I don't know. They're pretty niche, I guess. It's weird that into uh, the, I thought this was a really awkward thing with acrobatic strikes, and I thought the same way with the balance affinity for both Feral and Guardian Druid, and auto attacking and using special abilities from outside of normal melee range. I don't know if it's a fantasy thing or I'm just like nitpicking, but it looks stupid. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't look cool at all that you're auto attacking at the air even further away from a boss and you're hurting them, like. It's neat yeah. from like a video game standpoint, but it looks dumb as hell. Just add some animations like flying claws and rips. Yeah, yeah because the acrobatic strikes is that for Outlaw. Is that you're striking at the air, you but you're still it hurting. It, it, it makes you eight yard melee range. And if a boss yeah. has like a huge hitbox, it's already... Hitler is also eight yards already, I think. Yeah, it's... <sighs> Nobody complains about that. So. Ah. I All think right. it will be. it will be fine. A uh, deeper stratagem looks kind of weird. It feels like a PvP talent, to be honest. And I, I don't know why a PvP talent is in the PvE tree. Because most of the time, you don't want to reduce the amount of finishers you use during a boss fight. Right. Well, um, not sure about Outlaw. We'll see about that. But actually, like, if you if you were to pick Alacrit, what's it called? Uh, yeah, Alacrity, I think. Yeah. Uh, the one that gives you more haste whenever you do a finisher, you're pretty much gimping that talent by picking deeper stratagem so sure I don't know. but i i wonder i mean you've done a lot of stuff with math and you've wrote apis for rogue sim stuff like that so this, this is weird for me because when i was testing i thought deeper stratagem meant that yeah sure over the course of a five minute encounter you will have less finishers but because each finisher is going to have a, a, a greater degree of either damage or duration more energy efficiency is it how does that work exactly because that's what I thought this was supposed it's to be. It's more energy efficient, but uh, at least on subtlety, our energy, our finishers are net positive. Sure. So you actually so don't want to reduce the amount of finishers you do. Okay. It's also your mastery on subtlety. You want to do more finishers overall, even if it, even if they do more damage. No, not not necessarily. You... They do. They scale linearly, so sure. It, it doesn't matter from the damage perspective if you do five or six combo points. Okay. What happens? I mean... The only thing is, what happens is you. Uh, free up some GCDs by having to use less finishers. Okay. And in general, using less finishers. Yeah. But they're stronger finishers. That's, that's the weird part about this is because where does the math tip that would you want more that are slightly weaker or less that are really stronger? It will be the same, basically. So if you do um, five strong finishers, you spend 30 combo points. Mm-hmm. And it will do the same damage as spending as doing six finishers for five combo points. So it doesn't matter. Mm. All you did was uh, free up one GCD. And you say it feels like a PvP talent because of the extra stun duration, for example. Yeah. Yeah. And also because finishers hitting harder than harder. Yeah. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. All right. What else you got? Anticipation. Anticipation still the same old, same old. Except it's a little bit nerfed. Um, we'll have to see if Outlaw will have to use it or not. It will be a math problem, basically. Right. Uh, Vigor looks pretty good for Outlaw. Outlaw, Outlaw can use the energy. Um, tier 60, basically, I don't know, survival. Cheat Death is still there. I'm relieved. Even though it's a little bit nerfed. A little think. nerfed, yeah. Yeah, it's it's two minutes now instead of one and a half. Feels bad, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to spec it. Mm -hmm. uh, tier Iron, st Iron Stomach makes your Estus Flask stronger, though. Come on, now. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> that sigh. Oh. Uh, tier 90, Cannonball Barrage seems kind of weird. Like, mm. yeah, we'll see what will do the most damage. But basically, most likely Alacrity, mm -hmm. because it's it's like a passive Bloodlust once you stack it. But I noticed th uh, they should, I think, in my opinion, increase um, the duration because I actually lost the buff on um, boss testing because hmm. I had to refresh roll the bones or whatever and um, yeah it felt really bad to lose the buff I think I was already on 15 stacks or so I'm not sure how that, that can happen but it did and then there is killing spree uh, it's a pretty controversial ability mm, because most people dislike it for teleporting you into the danger zone um, yep. on Thok for example it insta-killed you even it, though 
the tooltip says ports you behind the target. Right. And on, on Thok, the tooltip says eats any anything in front of the boss, but you still died for some reason. I don't know. When I was testing it, it looked like they fixed a lot of the AI for it. You won't you, your your initial place doesn't change anymore, but like you your yeah, camera that's freaks out. Baseline. Yeah, but you don't like fly behind Cormorak's butt and fall to your death anymore, or you shouldn't. So. No, that's just using the the minor glyph for killing spree. It's baseline now. Right. And yeah. the glyph made you teleport basically back from where you use the ability, which is, in my opinion, bad because I I dislike that glyph, because most of the time when you are killing spreeing and uh, like jumping after your target, you don't want to go back to the place where you started. You want want to stay on your target and do damage. So. Mm -hmm. That's true. I was gonna. I don't know go off real quick about alacrity as obviously looking at it it's a very good stacking haste buff i was wondering why it just falls off when it falls off i was thinking that why doesn't it if you actually let the duration go to zero it stays at zero but then rapidly decays so it's a little less punishing because if you lose 15 stacks it's gone yeah what if you're if you gone. have 15 stacks and you're out of you're, you're out of be able to restack you it to 14 you'll drop to 14 13 thir like to a second, I was going to suggest. Work. Yeah, just to have something. Because uh, you're still be... going fast, but why should you use the whole thing? Might be hard on Blizzard's part to program that. I don't know. That's very true. Maybe maybe they will increase the duration. I don't know. We we'll see. Sure. And then on the level 100 um, talents, we have Roll the Bones, which will most likely be the uh, single target talent mm -hmm. to go. Um, it will replace Slice and Dice. Uh, we'll have to see if you actually want to gamble for buffs or not, if, if it will be worth it. So some of the buffs will be obviously stronger than other ones. Yep. And it's um, we'll, we'll have to see when or if breakpoints will be figured out when to just override and fish for a better one. And Marked for Death is pretty weak right now because there's no more cooldown reduction from using finishers. So it's just just some extra damage. Um, same as Death from Above. Death from Above does some AoE, I guess. But so does Mark for Death if you use Blade Flurry. So we'll have to see. So one of them will be best, and that will be picked basically. And I, on. Yeah? Oh, I said I, Death from Above also, in my opinion, needs just like some TLC to look different or at least have different interactions for each of the specs now because it is the exact yeah. same thing for all three of them. And it's just doesn't do anything different to synergize with the fact that you're an outlaw rogue, a salty rogue, or an assassination rogue anymore. And even that, it kind of only makes sense for assassination. Like, it's like an Ezio move, right? It's an Assassin's Creed, like, dive, and then blah! Like, it, it makes sense. I but... can see a pirate doing that as well. Yeah, well, you see Jack Sparrow jumping up into the air and falling on someone with his sword and yeah, pistol. Exactly. Uh, hey. But... A real saber slash. <laughs> a real saber slash. Um... Do you want to go over cool. some some subtlety stuff real quick too? A lot of the things are the same, but um, they want to run over some subtlety talents too, real quick. All right. Uh, then we have Master of Subtlety, which mm -hmm. has a 100% uptime basically right now because of passive dance, always proking, and blah blah blah. A weapon master, I don't know, feels you don't really notice it being there. It's just a six percent chance for your attack to hit twice. Like, wow. Yep. And then there's Gloom Blade. Which replaces backstab and basically uh, incorporates all the quality of life improvements rogues asked for, at least concerning backstab. Mm -hmm. So why is backstab still a thing? People, people um, on, on BlizzCon, um, uh, one spokesman I don't know who exactly said that uh, positional requirements feel bad and should not be in the game. And then they announced that it's gone for Feral, it's gone for, I don't know, somebody else had them, I think, as well. And it's still there for rogues, for sub rogues. Like, I mean, you can still front why? stab, but you do gain 30% additional damage while backstabbing. I wouldn't see it that way. I would I would see it differently. I would say you lose damage while being in front. That's very true. Addition exactly. Additionally to yep. being parryable. That's very true. Yep. Yeah, it's not a bonus to be behind the, the target. It's just a penalty to be in front. The big thing I saw about Gloomblade as well is that it does shatter damage, which ignores armor. Yeah, I don't. I think that's like class. Uh, that's for class fantasy, basically. It doesn't really matter if it did, if it does shadow damage or not. They they might just like 
increase Wait, the damage it does. PvP. Right, cause it, it, it's, it's, it's the damage. Okay, in PvP and right. madness. Yeah. In PvP and mind matter against blade. That's true. Sure. But What's in next? PvE, it doesn't matter if it's magic or not. Uh, Night Stalker, I don't know. Subterfuge. They don't really impact gameplay that much. Subterfuge is not even working on um, Alpha. Yep. So it will most likely be removed, I guess. I don't know. Well, they, they it work, never really works. But they don't work with Shadow Dance. Master of Subtlety works with Shadow Dance, but not Night Stalker, yeah. Subterfuge, or Shadow Focus. So should they? <laughs> uh, not with a passive version, I think. Right, okay. Otherwise, it might be, I don't know, even more OP, I guess. A little bit. Yeah, exactly. Not necessarily OP, but you just gain so much from using a finisher. It's it's pretty stupid, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, where was I? 45. Subterfuge. Oh, yeah. I was talking about yeah. Subterfuge. It, didn't re it never really worked out as a talent ever. Uh, when they introduced it in MOP, mm -hmm. it always like bugged out and had some weird interac interaction with Glyph of Vanish. Uh, Glyph of Vanish basically allows you to get a double subterfuge until today, basically. Uh, I think that talent never really worked. And on 45, you have deeper stratagem, same problem, basically. Like, you don't want to reduce the, the amount of finishes you use, so it's pretty much worthless for some. Mm -hmm. And there's Vigor giving you more energy. Uh, but you, you don't, don't really need... need. Not, not right now, at yeah. least. And Anticipation, basically, only choice left. So yeah, level 60, some self-heal and cheat death and elusiveness. It's fine, I guess. Uh, 75, I don't know, like... Mm. Kind of feels like PvP talents. Yeah, it's fine, I guess. It, it does. All you'd probably use in raiding yeah, is on the prey on the week for like ads that can be stunned. Yep. Yeah, pre-med rip. I like that ability. It's now a passive. Yep. Just gen generating one more combo point. Not not doing anything for the gameplay. Just just quickening up your mindless rotation, I guess. Mm -hmm. From from uh, five builders to four, I guess. So yeah. Alacrity it seems fine, I guess. Enveloping shadows. We'll see. Um, I guess that replaces slice and dice. Um, yeah, we'll see if it's worth it or not. Well, yeah, you don't even you have don't... Slice and Dice as sub, so you can take Enveloping Shadows to yeah. have a Slice and Dice-like mechanic. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. They 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 pruned that. Feels bad. There's not a lot to do anymore in the spec. And on level 100, you got Relentless Strikes, Marked for Death, and Death from Above. Relentless Strikes most likely uh, being the best here for just uh, hastening up the, the, the rotation. Depending on how so, they yeah. change Shadow Dance. Yeah, we'll see. I, I it, it will be hard to see to say what they predict what they they're gonna do, if if they are going to bring back Find Weakness or not, and or I guess they could they could do a lot of stuff. There's there's definitely room for the Ninja Fantasy, mm -hmm. but not the way they implemented it. I think. They could add like a whole different kind of gameplay while shadow dancing, for example. They could add finishers that only are usable while stealthed. Ooh. That would be something new. Yeah. Or using or shadow dance for that matter. So it would be could be really cool, I guess. We'll see what they will come up with. That's actually a really good idea. I like that option of the possibility of finishers that only work in stealth. Yeah, I like that as well. I read it on the internet. <laughs> Oh, did you? It's not your idea? Okay. No, it's not mine. We did it! Read it! <laughs> All right. And on the artifact, you got, like, one active ability for a subtlety. Like, really? And it's not its not even doing anything. It's, it's just one minute cooldown, and it does damage. Like, wow, it's not interacting in any way with anything. You yeah. don't use energy. You don't gain combo points. You don't get anything. It doesn't empower your next ability. That's a lot of the artifact Reminds perks. me of DK uh, talents. And those major notes for subtlety are all passive. They're not doing anything for your gameplay. Yep. That's not what they promised at BlizzCon, I think. They said um, that talent... So they're going to simplify the basic um, rotations and stuff, mm -hmm. but you will be able to customize the rotation with your uh, talent picks and, and uh, artifact traits and blah, blah, right. blah. But... Uh, I don't see that, to be honest. It's, it's not here, at least on Subtlety. 
I was hoping a little bit more Path of titan -y kind of stuff with the artifacts. I mean, they start out like that, though, because they get a new ability and they have a couple new interactions, but then a lot of things are just passive. They just happen. And the plague of that, which I'm not going to rant about Enhanced Shaman too much in this, but so many things for the Enhanced Shaman unlock are just more random sources of damage. That's, like, all we get. Like, our wolves do extra elemental damage. Our... <laughs> Our Lava Lash yeah. spawns a, a fire tornado. Fantasy. Our, our Storm Strike can Storm Strike again when we're not even doing it. It's Storm Strike can do Storm Strike Wind Fury, right? Um, <laughs> when we Storm Strike, we could, like, unleash extra elements and just attack things from the ground. And Fantasy, okay. It's all just extra damage stuff, which, yeah, fantasy is cool. But, like, it just happens. I, I prefer gameplay. Yeah, it's just having uh, it happen. Me too, but apparently not. Well, Trox, want to walk us through? You told me at the beginning of the show that Blood Death Knights have only like three good talents. So, what th what are those three good talents, and why is everyone else, all, all the other talents, uh, not good? You wanna you wanna walk I mean, me through? I mean, I'm this not gonna time? go through every talent. No, of course that not. Would just take too long. But That's fine. basically, as of the current build on Alpha, you take Heart Strike, Bloody Reprisal, and Bloody Reprisal is really bad, but the other two options are completely useless, so you mm. just take it anyways. You take Rapid Decomposition, not because it's good, but because the other two do not function as of the current build. Oh, if well. they did function, you would take Anti-Magic Barrier. Sure, okay. And then Tier 60, you take Purgatory. Tier 75, take whatever you like. Doesn't matter, they all the are kind of bad. <laughs> And then tier 90, you take Exhum, and because you never cast Mirror End. And then in tier 100, you take Bone Storm to either help your terrible ad pick up. Because mm. right now on Alpha, Blood does less damage than it does at level 100 on Live, so you actually have trouble getting aggro and stuff. I've heard this. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, and then of course, the AoE mechanics for Blood right now are a disaster, to put it mildly. You but... basically have. You basically have to have mobs stacked inside each other's hitbox to actually AoE them correctly. There, There's a problem with that. I mean, because I was going to bring up Ossuary, because, like, you, at least Blood AK and Unholy DK have, like, the same ability. Like, you stand in your Death and Decay and, like, one of your abilities AoEs. But well, all those Aus AoEs are so tiny, it's awful. Well, the other thing is, for a tank, it doesn't work to have a 30-second cooldown ability that's randomly refreshed to be right. your main AoE. Like, it just doesn't work. It's right. so... It's really unplayable, is the best way to put it. It's like, ugh. I, I don't want to talk too much about it. It just feels so horrible. At the very minimum, the cleave radius needs to be increased. But either way, on the topic of the talents, I mean... Why do I go through the talents like that? Basically, a lot of them are pretty obvious. You never cast Marorand right now, so you don't take anything that buffs Marorand. You take Exhum, in fact, partially because you don't want to cast Marorand. It still gives you the option to have Bone Shield charges that way. Right. But, and a lot of the other talents, I mean, the other talents just aren't competitive numerically. They're really, really far behind, or... Basically, other reasons. I mean, again, in my big doc, I go over the talents in depth, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. What I will talk about, however, is... I mentioned this before when we talked about reducing complexity. Again, reducing complexity is fine, but you need to give the option to spec or talent in some way into complexity. The new blood talents, however, in Legion, have less of that than Wad ever did. Look at the talents that you pick. Look at Exhum. How do you use Exhum? Use it every minute on cooldown. How do you use Bone Storm? Basically use it every minute on cooldown. Um, Mark of Blood, use it on cooldown. Anti-Magic Barrier, okay, you actually use that somewhat situationally. Bloody Reprisal, hit it on cooldown. Or maybe when you're pulling to help apply diseases. Heart Strike. Bloodworms, they're passive, consume vitality, you use it on cooldown because it's a big chunk of damage. It's a damage talent, by the way, consume vitality. If you here's the thing, one-to-one -one healing damage is always in favor of damage because healing is less valuable than damage per point. And how does consume much... random question? How does consume vitality work on bosses? It does the death knight's max health. Oh, it's the Death damage. Knight's max health. The tool tip That's why it's a DPS talent, because, like I said, one-to-one -one healing the damage always favors damage. That's why the Paladin sure. Trink gets so broken on live. Right. It has one-to-one -one healing damage, but they tuned the healing 
around assuming it's a mitigation trinket. So when the damage is one to one with that, it's hilariously broken. Mm -hmm. But either way, that's getting way off topic. I mean, the thing is, all of these talents, like I said, they're either passive or you just hit them on cooldown. There's no complexity here. Compared to stuff like even Plague Leech, and then you have Breath of Syndragosa. Breath of the Syndragosa was the example in what of talenting into complexity. It was a supremely complex talent compared to any of the other options. Yeah. I would argue maybe even any option available to any spec as a talent, but I'm not completely sure about that. I mean, and then stuff like that is completely gone. It's missing from the Legion talent tree. So when people tell me something like, oh, well, they're just simplifying it for the beginning beginner player, I can agree with, I can get behind that idea. I think it's fine to try and include every type of player. But there needs to be something available for more advanced players. And so far, all they've done is remove the complex gameplay and not give any options to add it back in. We we sort of had that topic when Warlords was on the horizon and Mop, and we're like, oh my god, they're removing things from all of our classes. They're removing the complexity. Oh, they're... But then I think they pruned a lot less than warlords. They like did. Warlords, they, did. they pruned like four buttons for blood. In Legion, they pruned I think twelve to fourteen or fourteen buttons from it's blood. True. I just they wonder. Way more in Legion. It's because you can compare this with, and I said this before in the pre-show, but people on the show have probably said this before. And I think Blizzard is trying to make each spec their own like little hero from like Heroes of the Storm. So you don't have, like, a ton of buttons. There's no reason to have a ton of buttons. If you want to see button bloat, look at other MMOs that have, like, all your class of, like, 30 abilities. But all the abilities just kind of, like, hit in order. You're just playing, like, whack-a-mole with all your abilities. Like, there's no rhyme or reason. Like, Final Fantasy, you're just like, I'm going to hit this one, and 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 this one. It doesn't really do anything for you. But I think the complexity of having this is knowing how best to maximize your use of the buttons you're doing. More buttons um, is not necessarily better. I will agree right, with that argument completely. But mm -hmm. that's the thing. Breath of Sindragosa was a button you hit every two minutes. It wasn't a, a question of more button presses, but it changed the way you approached your rotation while it was active. It made you make different decisions. It made you think differently. That was the complexity, not how yeah. many button presses you did Absolutely. to make it work. In fact, Breath of Sindragosa technically slowed your rotation down, yet I think it was still a great talent. Why? Because it made you think more while it was active. It made your decisions more important. It counterbalanced the slower pace of play with making every decision matter more. So it kept the difficulty aspect rather than just being easier. Because if you just slow something down, it's just easier. But when you add something else in, then suddenly it's not just easier. And it's True. more... It's a case of taking something away, but then adding even more back in in a different way. I mean, right. it's just... What I would like to see, and I know these talents will change. Obviously, everyone is aware it's alpha. This will change. I would like to see more stuff brought back in that was similar to how, for example, Breath or Plague Leech or Blood Tap or the resource management could be brought back in through talents as an optional choice. And I know there's the common argument of, oh, well, if... you if you add complex options, then you have to tune them to be slightly better, and then you're forced into taking them. This argument doesn't really make much sense. Because you have to keep in mind, most people do content when they massively outgear it. And I mean massively. If to you're killing time. Archimonde today, the boss is a joke compared to what it was back when oh. people killed it originally. It's totally quite literally twice as easy. So saying that, oh, well, if I don't take this 5% better talent, I won't be able to kill Mythic Archimon, doesn't really make sense. It only makes sense if you're quite literally doing world first progression. Right. And guess what? If you're a person who's doing world first progression, you're probably someone who likes complexity and would have talented into it anyways. Mm. Just by it's it self selecting. Does Not if it does less yeah, damage. Yeah, but that's my point. You're, but I yeah, but you generally you'll prefer. Unfair. You'll prefer complex mechanics, though, because a person who's interested in that type of high-level play usually self-selects for preferring complex mechanics as well. Right. I also played sub on uh, Siege of Ogrimmar up on farm. So, yeah. We'll have to, to see. There's a lot of... Yeah, it. there's possibilities here for... 
it sounds so weird to say, but I, I feel like they're trying to get. I mean, obviously, this is a huge like. I don't. This is not like a, a very wide known opinion or statement or theory, but more or less, Legion is kind of like a giant WoW reboot. It's like the Spider-Man franchise reboot. It is that large of a a rebuilding more or less because each expansion they've like we want to add new shit to this class and this class and you get this and you get that this expansion you get this you get that you get this you get new talents and then mop we got new talent trees we got new talent builds then in worlds they try to like oh wait a minute holy crap we have too much stuff let's bring it back a little bit and they barely did and now in legion they're like all right it's been over a decade we have new hardware, we have new models, we have new backend, we have new file systems, we have new server response time, we have all this new building blocks because the game is getting old. We've been playing it for a third of our lives, if you're my age. And they're trying to just refresh everyone. And it's weird because we're going to the same thing with the, the WoW movie is like the same exact thing. Because the WoW movie itself is like a refreshing of all the old lore. And it's like the the ultimate edition or whatever the new comic book series do, you know? So we'll have to see if it to old players, we get a little like, so what you're saying is the best time to play is right now, like before the, the reset. Well, I'm not, no, I, I think that the, they're trying to refresh the game or give it a facelift. because It's been over a decade old, but I, I think because... that if players have been playing for a long time that have seen like the, the ramp in, I guess complexity now will be kind of toned a lot back. That's honestly a of... speaking, a lot of this, a lot of this makes sense in a way. Mm -hmm. What Blizzard wants to do is basically get rid of the hardcore player base completely, and then try to simplify the game down quite a bit so they can attempt to bring in new players from the Warcraft movie. Very possible. In all honesty, this is most likely a business decision. I don't. It's a little. It's bad. just a little too suspicious. I can feel your face contorting. I mean that 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 survey went out where they might be giving away like a free month of World of Warcraft with one ticket purchase, like. Mm. It makes sense, that. but. <laughs> Anything else to add before I, mean, I move along? I gotta do a little intro commercial break, and we gotta take some questions from chat. So. Anything else, Relix, you want to throw up there? Yeah, a, lo a lot of people complain about rogues feeling like you just reached level 10 instead of being 110 on alpha. So, mm. I don't know. They might be on the right track then, because if they really want to restart the game, start over fresh, like, you got to restart at level 10 and then move up eventually. We'll see. I think it's going to be from the perspective of more hardcore players like the three of us are or those that are watching and those that like the show is obviously geared at a mythic level and we trickle down our information and i distill stuff and try to get concrete information out to the, the community right that's fine but i wonder for many people it might feel like a large change that is not necessarily bad but also not good but many people might actually find this is a really good change but we'll have to see a lot of the classes are changing drastically so that's good or bad. We'll see. I mean, I thought, I don't know who tweeted this the other day. I don't know if Eladia like retweeted it or someone retweeted it, but um, Savage is to Warlords as Fantasy is to Legion. <laughs> and yeah. we saw how I mean... Savage Warlords was. So... A, a Rogue was pretty fine in, in Warlords. It, well, no, Savage and Fantasy or... aren't used the same way. Savage was just used as sort of a descriptor of Warlords, whereas mm -hmm. Fantasy is being used to as a basis to make gameplay design decisions. And I think it's kind of... It's being used, it's being used too much, I feel, as a justification for changes. That's fair. I mean, if you want to talk about Fantasy for Blood DK, I mean... What they've done in Legion is more or less try to bring blood to be more like other tanks, adding more passive mitigation via bone shear, reducing the number of cooldowns DKs have relative to other tanks, hmm. basically raising passive mitigation, reducing active active cooldowns, and 
somewhat de-emphasizing the usage of death strike, slowing the rotation down, removing abilities like breath, removing the complex resource management, the stack have all of these things bring blood closer to other tanks in terms of design space. So it's just it's a little jarring for me to hear Blizzard say something like we we want to emphasize the fantasy of each spec. We want each spec to be more different, more unique. When so far, what they seem to mean by that is basically the color of your spells or the graphics of your spells. For example, Blood Beasts. Um, it's like, oh, we'll give Blood Blood Beasts or Bone Storm. But what is Bone Storm? It's quite literally Russian Jade Wind with a heel tacked on. It is. Actually, think about it. And then it is. what is Blood Mirror? It's Touch of Karma. Yeah. And then what is uh, Blood Beasts? Can... It's a divine protection on a five minute cooldown with a hot tacked on. You, you can't dissect any ability that way, though. Yeah, but yeah. still, I mean, Breath of Sinvergosa was uniquely a DK thing that nobody had any equivalent for, and they so took that away. Grip. That's so fair. was Mask Grip, and the result Yeah, but Mask was Grip had other weak. problems. Breath didn't have the same problems Grip had. Grip had the problem of being too mandatory. Yep. Yeah, nobody brought DKs for Breath, I think. They brought, they, brought, they were brought for grip. Not, yeah. People didn't bring DKs for damage, and Breath had to do with damage. Yep. At least for DPS. Either way, I mean... I just don't like how fantasy seemed to... It's like, when they say we want to push fantasy, it just seems to be in terms of graphics, basically. But yet they still use fantasy to justify gameplay changes, even though the gameplay isn't becoming more unique. And it doesn't make mm -hmm. sense to me. There's this disconnect with what Blizzard is saying versus what they're doing. And I don't, yeah. I, I guess I just don't understand. I you're mean, not, you're, you're not wrong. It, it, it's kind of like, you know what I said before about the whole, oh, you know, Blizzard might be just be trying to phase out the hardcore player base. Honestly, because, because of things like this, they, they have a lot of this double speak going on. They say one thing and do another. And it just feels like yeah. there's some, there, it, it feels like there's something behind it that they're not saying that they feel like they can't say publicly. So they're just saying, they're using terms like fantasy to sort of sugarcoat Justify. it in a way. Justify or sugarcoat, yes. Mm -hmm. well, that's fair. I, I, I don't disagree. There are definitely some things that I hope, I mean, we've still got like probably five or six more months of, of testing, at least, you know, August, September. But um, I'm going to... Moves along real quick to the little mid-show commercial breaky here. It's not, it's not really mid-show anywhere. Um, and plug some stuff, and then we'll come back and take some questions from chat for a little while. But as many things are changing, and there is a lot of downtime right now, if you are trying to get into the game or get characters geared up or know for a place to go when Legion drops and you're looking for raids or dungeon runs or achievements, stuff like that, Open Raid is only stronger because of the new group feature. If you don't use open raid to find raids within your time or special events and whatnot, maybe go check out openraid.org, make an account. Right now, let me go check on events. Yeah, there are 543 events coming up, no big deal. And you can just go here and browse events and there are different old school runs or there's a Herald of the Titans run going on, different mythic groups. People raid all the time through open raid. This pop-up is actually a little hard to, to scroll down here. But there's tons of stuff weeks out on Open Raid. So if you want to raid and you're new to the game or you're coming back and you need to find something to get some logs to apply to a guild, Open Raid. Right right here. Get the button right there. Additionally, if you want to help support Final Boss TV and keep me doing what I'm doing here and also get yourself something nice to wear. I'm wearing one right now. If you... You can get this this little guy. This little guy right here. Fabelina drew this. You can go find those on our Design by Human store. We have a whole bunch of designs coming up. We have some collaboratory designs on the way between Fabelina and Whammo or just Whammo. You can wear some Whammo. But Sylvanas and Jaina and the Ariar twins and Arthas and the two Method promo shirts from their World First. We'll see if a new guild makes a shirt in Legion. Who's going to get World First in Legion? I don't know. But they're all right there, Illidan, Ragnaros, and you can get this one and wear this around to BlizzCon when you go this year. Make sure you bump into him when you see him. 
And of course, if you've missed anything for Final Boss TV in the past or want to check out the past episodes, the VODs, the most watched episodes with the, again, with the, there's the Mythic World first and the Paragon World first or Mixing and Mook Club, they're all on the YouTube page. We're also found on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Just search for Final Boss TV or Final Boss WoW if you want to listen to the audio-only version of the show. That is all right there for you. Of course, just finalboss.tv. It's all right there as well. Episodes, podcasts, the store link, how to support the show even further. Right there. Just right, right, finalboss.tv. Right there. Alrighty. Let's take some questions from chat for a little bit. How much time do we have? I've got... Probably... I got tomorrow. 17 <laughs> to 20 minutes left of the show. So I have some more notes in here, but I'm sure that people that have questions in chat that we can go for. I had like artifact questions, stuff like that. And if you are a patron of Final Boss TV on our Patreon page, you get to see all the show notes. So you can see all the stuff that we couldn't get to because these episodes don't have enough time. Um, but yeah, if you have questions in chat, please feel free to poke them up there. Or you can hit Final Boss TV up on Twitter. I'll read your question off to either of our guests. If you have questions for tanks, blood decays, or rogues. Please go for it. Callie has the most important question. I ask it every show that I'm able to tune in for. What's the question? I, I want to know the question again. What's the question? Uh, Dark asked me a question. I'll wait for Callie's. Um, thoughts on Blizzard considering a special offer for a while? Well, that's what I told. I talked about. Um, new accounts? That's fine. I mean, if you're already subscribed or you're already playing the game, you can play the game for free. Just buy tokens off the H. I mean, if you're not making like 10 to 30,000 gold a week right now on garrisons, not to be rude, but you're doing it wrong. Because you could basically pay for WoW for free for like a year or more now. I could pay for WoW for over a year for free with just gold. Maybe I don't want to do garrisons. But if everyone did that, then the price of the token would inflate. So you yeah, don't really want to tell you're, people that. You're... Yeah, so don't say, don't say that. Oh, I didn't well, I didn't say anything. Who said that? What? They're ruining it for what us. What happened? What happened? Yeah. You know what happened. Want to wait for a real question to be asked? <clears throat> oh, pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Uh, why is Seraphim not the same as Breath of Sidregosa? Okay, well, I'll oh, actually no. answer Here's this one. one seriously. Okay. Yes, they both involve the same pooling gameplay to build up to them. Mm -hmm. The difference, however, is once you actually cast Seraphim, you continue doing your standard rotation after that. In addition, its duration is fixed. Breath of Sidregosa, you do a completely different rotation while it's up. And the rotation is not fixed, and it's dependent on how well you play. And there's synergy with things like Plague Leech, AMS, etc., which creates interweaving gameplay. So comparing the two abilities is kind of hilarious, to be honest. To even think they're the same at all. I mean, I'll put it this way. The similarities between something like Bonestorm and Russian Jade Wind are far far greater than something like yeah. Seraphim and Breath of Sinvergosa. On on the earlier build, the the actual graphic for Bonestorm was RJW. It was the same graphic. They just replaced well, I mean, the graphic. Yeah, they recently. obviously coded the spell. Like yeah. they just copy pasted the spell and changed the values. Yeah. Um if you take into account all different forms of legendaries that have appeared, which one is your favorite or do you have your own solution for them? Northern Man's question couples into one I saw earlier about what do you think about the blood artifact trox? I mean, people, I hear a lot of people talk about the critical bone shield talent, and I don't know why they're oh, talking yeah. about the, it. The crit block. The reason, the reason why they added that was simply to fix crit scaling because Death Strike can crit now, if people don't know, which yep. I don't like. I don't really don't like that change, personally, but whatever. It crits now. And because Death Strike crits now, and because of the way Heart Strike and Mararen compete for the same resource, runes, they have to make Bone Shield also be able to crit in the same way so that Death Strike doesn't massively start out scaling Mararen. Because... And, why do I say Death Strike when I'm talking about Heart Strike? Because Heart Strike generates extra RP for extra Death Strikes. Mm -hmm. So in a, in a way, if you use Mirror End, you're reducing the amount of Death Strikes you cast. So Death Strike and, Mer and Bone Shield technically are competing directly in that way. So that rate was simply added just to make sure scaling doesn't mess up 
the balance between the two. That's all it's there for. It's not some big gameplay thing. I mean, yes, is Blood gonna like crit more in Legion? Yeah, but it's not really because of that trait. That's not the main reason. Hmm. And I mean, as for the other traits, the Vamp Blood traits basically just gain a shield after the Vamp Blood expires, which... You have another one. Much. Yeah, there's weird ones too, because one is... One of them buffs death, gives you healing when you death coil. That's obviously going to be changed because death coil does not exist for blood right now. Sure. Part yeah, of the was, which is the 12 one was... abilities that were pruned. It's the, the unending thirst one. It's when your bloodshed expires, you deal damage equal to half your missing health to your enemy target, and you gain health well, equal to the damage you deal. I'm going to say this about that one. First of all, you know how I talked before about how one-to-one -one damage to healing is broken? And I right. gave the example of Consume Vitality and then the Paladin Trinket on live. If you'll notice, Unending First is exactly the same thing as that. So that should give you an impression of what I think about that trait to begin with. On top of this, there are about three major ways I can think of to exploit that trait. To basically play a kind of an off-DPS blood decay. Now... Whether or not that will actually be tuned to be make sense or be viable or whatever, I don't know. But the fact is, I can foresee a lot of, um, let's just say, questionable gameplay around that trait. Much like you see with Paladins doing Slash Sit the Proctor Trinket today. Ah, uh, yep, yep, yep. It's, it's just... No, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Slash Sit won't be the only thing Blood will do to make use of that trait. That's because, just one of the things Because if you you're supposed do. to be... Yeah, it's going to get gamed. Like, it'll definitely get gamed. But here's the thing. I actually like that trait because it's the only complex gameplay It's a complex... Ah! Oh, there it is. But that's the thing. But on the other hand, it's broken. Mm. I agree. It's not a very good trait. I think it should be deleted. But on the other hand, I don't want it to be deleted. So it's kind of a dilemma for me. I think it's badly designed is, I guess, the best way to put it. And I hope they rework it or replace it with something else. But I'm afraid is what they're going to do is just nerf it into the ground and not fix any of its flaws is the fear I have currently. It was and then it's going to be oh. neither interesting nor and still broken. It will, it will be uninteresting and broken still then. It wasn't the question that came up about rogues that I think Callie was oh, yeah. asking about rogue utility, which I argued this to you in Skype yesterday setting up the show notes that like, rogues have had, they had the BS faint crap for Mythic Black Hand, which was, like, required. They had, they have cloak. They had a monk or in there, actually. Cheat, de cheat death soaking. Yeah, sure, you could probably a monk or a shadow priest, I guess. You could you could do it once, you know, a shadow priest can do it once. But, like, what, what utility should a pure DPS have? I mean, they had, on Mythic, um, Mythic Garrosh, they could go up top to kill the, the engineers. Yeah, I did that. So, like, do they need... Really boring. Do you feel like there's something else they need, like, utility-wise? I think they've had a lot of... I call them, like, they've been bitch jobs before, but they're not really. They're really important jobs. Um, they are very important jobs yeah. that keep you in the raid. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, Obviously, yeah, they have really good I damage, too. I like that Rogue is really durable in raids. Are you? It's, mm. it's, it's really hard to die because of cheat death, because of faint, because of... I don't know. I think that's pretty much it. Like, what what else do you need? There's combat readiness, but nah. I mean, yeah, the new the new Estus flask is really strong. Um, yeah, about that. So, what does it do? That's your built-in health stone on a thirty-second cooldown that heals for thirty percent of your HP. Um, isn't it called something else, or did they it's, rename that? It's called. I call it Estus flask because it literally looks like that. Um, it's called your it's the Crimson Vial. It's Crimson Vial, right? Yeah. Oh, so that's why I didn't get you earlier. It's a uh, Dark Souls joke it. because it looks just like it. Yeah. And even you get like a little orangey fluff when you drink it. So, yeah. Yeah. No, but um, it's better than Recuperate. Definitely, Recuperate sure. does the same thing. And only but Salt even has Recuperate. So. No, everybody has it, but um, it's yeah, currently on live. Currently, yes, everybody but not in Legion. Right, right, right. But it's it's not upfront. So most people, when they want to use their heals, they want to use it upfront, and you actually have to think ahead also in your damage taken right now on S rogue. So 
And what was what was the question? I... Just what I do you I think? Sh should rogues have more like oh, yeah, utility? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or cloak of shadows? Uh, no, I I think rogues are actually fine with uh, what they got right now. I think we can pretty much cheese any mechan and any mechanic or a lot of mechanics. And uh, what else do you need from a DPS? I don't know. Like what? What does you what does do a mage offer? Percent more damage than everyone else, so you're useless. Yeah, sure. You but read the forms. <laughs> everybody wants to do more damage than everybody else, so I guess that that's a moot point. Well, we all suck compared to arcane mages right now, anyway. So I mean, what can we even complain about, right? I, th I think sub broke is fine. <laughs> it's not 900k DPS burst fine. Um, That's true. I mean, you're comparing in a very extreme situation. Right now, massively of course. favors arcane. 18, the game is not balanced around 18 second fights. Nope. <laughs> well, <laughs> if it was, then yeah, arcane would be would need retuning. But I mean, it's a bit seconds. Yeah. It's a bit. It's a bit unfair to say arcane is way ahead of everyone when the reality is just the extreme nature of scaling in the situation favors yeah, this the expansion design of the spec. Scaling is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I want to ask something about resource generator resources. Yeah, if the DK over. resource generator should be like rebuilt or rechanged or something. I mean, I talked a little bit about some of that. I talked about how the six death rune system means all abilities compete for the same resource, which means they all have to directly compete, which means in most cases one tends to win. And then you kind of just ignore the others. But I mean, I, I didn't talk about runic power death strike very much. And what the problem with that is. Basically, the issue of making Runic Power Death Strike is it means most of your mitigation comes from pressing any button. For example, if you just Press take any default key, Blood Strike, Blood DK, if you just take the default untalented Blood DK on Alpha and you were to just spam Blood Strike and then use the Runic Power for Death Strike, you get a certain amount of mitigation from that. Now imagine if you were spamming Death's Caress, which is effectively Icy Touch, and then you use the Runic Power to cast Death Strike, you'd only actually be taking a 33% loss to your mitigation. And this is doing the dumbest possible thing. Do you see the problem here? It kind of means that no matter what you do, you get roughly the same amount of mitigation. And that means that the decisions you make matter a lot less it means that playing well doesn't really matter that much you can kind of just do whatever you want i mean mm -hmm. i'm not saying it's a bit this is a bit of a hyperbolic argument i know obviously there's always going to be some obviously the amount of gap between the best and worst choice is always going to be somewhat arbitrary how much should it be i mean you can debate but it kind of highlights an issue with the system everything funnels into death strike as it currently stands. There's no decision to be made there at all. There's no other way to spend runic power, for example. Yeah, it's that's your only runic of power use, right? Is Death Strike? Yes, that's it's all? literally the only one. I, yeah. There actually is not a single other thing that I can think of that spends runic power. It was Death Quill, but it's Not gone. even a talent. Yeah. There's no conversion, there's no Breath of Sinvigosa. I, yeah, I don't think there is anything. Yeah. It definitely needs something. Um, this is a... Noble is asking about Salty Rogues being GCD capped on Alpha. which was using Vigor and Shadow Focus and Ruthlessness. I don't know if you'd use Vigor at all. But before you answer, I'll just giggle a little bit that I've been GCD capped for like three years. <laughs> I played Enhanced yeah, Shaman. Like, there's literally yeah, no downtime no. ever. And it's even worse in Legion. Not worse, but different, I guess. But go ahead. Traditionally, Rogue is not a GCD capped class. It's mm. an, a, your energy is usually what's constraining you. There are some situations where you are indeed GCD capped. Like right now on, on live uh, subtlety, on pull during Bloodlust, you are capped during your 10 seconds opener, where you want to do as much as you can so your trinket will explode and blah blah blah. But most of the time, you are actually not GCD capped and therefore pooling. That's core rogue gameplay to me and it's like it's kind of going away in legion right now we'll see where it's headed but a lot of the theory craft suggests that unless blizzard changes a lot of things 
uh, Rogue will be, in fact, GCD camp, kind of like um, Brew, not Brewmaster, uh, Windwalker, when Windwalker. they were introduced. And Blizzard said, nah, that we don't want you to be GCD camp. We're going to change you around, blah, blah, blah. I don't see why they do that with Rogues then right now. Like, well, Windwalker is like an arcade game. It's like A, B, A, C, A, D, A, B, A, C, A. So it's not really GCD cap because you have like a, you have like a, a, a ladder in now the climb, not. right? You're climbing this DPS point. ladder, right? I think during Throne of Thunder or whatever, it was GCD capped. Mm. No, I believe it. I mean, you could be GCD capped as long as you have like a roadmap, right? You, you, you can do your thing. Like, enhancement. Not, no, not, not as a rogue. Not as like a rogue. That. Not as a rogue, no. Uh, it's because you have your energy to manage. Otherwise, your That's energy is pointless. Like, why would you have energy then? It's very true. Why not just have cooldowns on your abilities and, like, I don't know. Even though sub doesn't really feel like it's gonna ever care about energy management, whereas maybe assassination and outlaw will, because sub just. Which swims is kind of odd because sub is the spec that requires currently the most energy management by far. Mm. So it's kind of weird seeing going it away. And I mean. <laughs> Where are they going then with the gear? I mean, raid gear will have a lot of a lot more stats, and then sure. there's also tier tier twenty. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. Might as well delete energy then, and I don't know. Maybe maybe get a new resource, shadow of force or whatever, which allows you to activate shadow dance or whatever. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I mean, assassination and outlaw. Energy makes sense, but subtlety now is all about shadow e stuff and no poisons and all about finishers and being in stealth and. But I mean, they're not gonna make one rogue not have energy, and the other two have energy. I don't think so. Hmm. But, um, before we get any deeper into this, because I think we're about to wrap up here, relics. Where can the rogue community at large go to find information about? legion alpha beta testing and of course and where will they go to see updated guides and things is there a discord server is there a website they can go to what can you plug yes for your there fellow is. rogues out there so first of all i'm gonna sh nah, i'm gonna start with mmo champion sure. the work section is pretty good there and uh, there's a lot of good discussion going on and then there is ravenhold.net and they have an I irc chat also discord now so, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, a lot of theory crafters, the theory crafters are, are there. Uh, the folks from Shadowcraft are there. Fiery and um, oh, that's... I forgot his name. And anyway, there's a lot of stuff going on there. So, so you should check it out. Might as well follow them on Twitter. That's very true as well. Yep, no, Ravenholt's a great place to go. How about you, Trox? Where will... Blood Death Knights or Death Lights in general go for testing info and then stuff in the future once the game is actually live to figure out what is what is good or not. Agewin just uh, posted your Google document, which they could definitely check out as well. But where else? I mean, that document isn't. The document does go over. I mean, I mentioned I had a, the document goes over the talents. It does go over somewhat of how to play it right now, but it's mostly a feedback document slash outlining. It goes in depth about a lot of the points I made today. Basically summarizes all the arguments on things. I mean, that's it's very long. I mean, I guess if you're interested in that sort of stuff, you would read it. To some extent, it's like partially, parts of it are partially like a guide. I don't know if I'd call it a resource per se, though. Mm -hmm. um, as for getting information, I mean... I don't know. There's not really a lot of places. I see a lot of stuff being said about blood in various places, and a lot of it's really, really wrong, to be quite honest. But I mean, if I'm playing blood and legion, I'll probably update my guide on MMO Champ in the DK section, and. The Acherus DK community is also a place where you can ask Death Knight questions. Mm -hmm. They have a Discord now too, yeah? Yeah, and there's also a tanking Discord, but that's not technically Death Knight specific. Sure. What is I the... don't know. What I, what I would avoid is stuff like uh, Noxic. <laughs> we'll definitely avoid that. <laughs> or random people on Reddit. 
Uh, what is the what's the is there uh, what's the tanking Discord? What's that called? What's there? Uh, uh, there is it's the tanking Discord. I don't have a link for it. I think it's somewhere in the prop paladin MMO champion thread. Okay. I don't. It's like buried in there. Maybe I'll dive into. Oh, is the the Acris IRC just goes right to Discord now? Oh, okay, cool. Definitely. That's like the, one of the newest ways, which I hope that flourishes in the future is more people that want to at least just like lurk and then read posts um, that if you don't have discord yet, it's like the new and improved and better version of Skype. And a lot of communities all have discords and you can just sit there and lurk and read posts and the uh, theory crafters and guide writers and, and sim see people post links and Google documents and videos and stuff in there, at least in the Shaman one, the earth shrine, for shamans, got stuff all the time that I'm just like I I don't listen to the resto and elemental stuff because I don't play those, but those are the best ways to go. So if you're looking for information in the future, check out and see. I post a lot of the I'll be posting a lot of these on the Fire Lord's favorite page on the website soon before Legion comes out. So, but anything else you want to to end with before we get out of here, gentlemen? I try to Discord. Um, like anything you write on it, basically. Uh, belongs to them according to the, the terms of use so you might want to read those first and also i would like to mention Taman as one of the uh, maintainers of shadowcraft i forgot his name earlier okay very good trox you got anything else to close with um I mean, on the whole topic, you asked about sources of information i kind of gave a hesitant answer and mm. There's a couple of reasons for that. The biggest one being, it's very early. Things are changing. I mean, I mentioned my document, but it's going to be out of date when they change the talents. So, I mean, and they're probably right. going to tweak Mararen. So, it's probably going to be pretty out of date by that at some point. Which yeah, means sure. I didn't really put that much effort into focusing on, you know, it isn't a guide. It's not intended to be a guide. I didn't put effort into that. My point with all this is there's not really going to be a lot of good information because the people who actually are sort of capable of giving completely accurate information aren't going to waste their time on a build that's going to change in two weeks. Right now. Yeah. And right now. the thing is, a lot of the people, a lot of the stuff you'll see right now is just random people basically just saying <laughs> random stuff. And oh, most yeah. of it's going to be wrong, to be quite honest. That's why I do this show, though, to, to help. I mean, for example, I've that. seen a lot of times it said, for example, on Reddit that, oh, well, currently blood should spam Mararen to keep a bone shield. That's mathematically incorrect currently mm. to do that. And that doesn't take a lot of work to figure that out. I mean, maybe that'll be the case later. It seems to be the in Blizzard's intent to make that the case. Right. But it's not accurate information, and yet people are still spouting it and trying to appear credible. Mm. So what I would tell people is, I guess, be a little bit careful of where you get your information from. A lot we of didn't people do it, are, Reddit. A lot of people who are credible aren't going to be wasting their time doing that type of work right now. Mm -hmm. As I said, I mean, why would you? It will be invalid in two weeks anyway. That's fine. I mean, these episodes, though, they build early talk, and we'll have to see how things change and evolve over time. We've got another four or five months left, so we'll have to see how this works out. But I think it's button time, gentlemen. Let us do this. Thank you all so much for being here today for episode number 109 of Final Boss TV, which is volume number two of the Let's Talk Legion Junket. I'll probably have way over a dozen of these before the actual expansion is out completely. I'll get around the table real quick to our guests. There's Trox. You can follow him on Twitter at Troxism, and he'll post things now and then. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you for being on the show again, sir. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Which chat apparently wasn't thankful for having me, but that's generally how it goes. Oh, there are way too many more lurkers that are sitting here going like this that's guy. What, yes, that's cheating. what I was going to say. Yeah. The, the thing truth. is, you see the, you see only the small percentage that are willing to speak up, and sure. generally, if people have something positive to say, they tend to not speak up. That's also why the WoW forums are flooded with negativity. Exactly right. For the same reason. No, People totally are happy fair. they don't say anything. That's totally fair. But thank you again, sir. I'll probably bring you back on in a couple of months from now. We'll see how things change and if if the gameplay does improve or evolve. 
And then we had Relix for Rogues today. You can follow him on Twitter at Relix underscore TV. You can find him over there That's on right. Ravenholt doing things. And I appreciate all your insight for the first time you've been on the show, sir. It was awesome. Sure. Uh, thank you for having me. I'd also like to give a shout out to uh, Jaxel from Aberration because I skipped raid today there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> got him! Uh, I, I, I forgot to tell them. Like, I, I know she saw on Twitter, but I didn't go there in person on Peak Speaker and told them that I would be here. So, well, you're but, yeah, you're, you're obviously fired. But obviously, I'm fired. hopefully, it was worth it. Good luck to you in the future, and I'll hopefully see you on in the future again. We'll have more episodes and rogue coverage, so maybe I'll see if I can squeeze you in again. Sure. Awesome. Thank you very much. As well as, real quick, the assistant producers that help put this show together and keep me doing what I'm doing from Patreon, Erdwin, Oscar H., and Death Scythe Pally. If you want to help support the show, maybe check out my Patreon page and work towards the Molten Store. You get free stuff! What's, what's not to like about free stuff? But next week... I'm hoping to either do two casters or two healers next week. And then if I do one or the other, the other one will be the week after. So, whoop. But stay tuned on social media and Facebook and Twitter for when that comes up. If you missed the episode, it'll be on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube right now, hello. Also, again, iTunes and Stitcher. If you want to listen to the audio-only versions of the show, we will see you all next week here at 4 o'clock Eastern. And trusting your seal of inevitable gold. That's all it gives you. And bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Yes. Trox, are you waving I'm or are you waving. just crying? I'm waving. You're waving? Okay. I appreciate that. Good stuff.